A few years ago, gaming was a pretty big part of my life. And every day after school, I would come home, turn on my computer and start playing with my friends. As time went by, I ended up gaming less and less until I stopped completely. As my interest for traditional gaming decreased, my interest for virtual reality grew. And if I were to take a guess, this is probably because it has a lot of the same elements, but in a new, refreshing and exciting format. The day has finally come, and it's not until recently I got my hands on a VR headset. More specifically, the Oculus Quest 2, or should I say Meta Quest 2. In this video, I wanted to share my first VR experience by trying out a long-awaited game that takes advantage of the VR concept perfectly, and that is Bone Lab. Let's not waste any more time so we can get this box open and start playing. After having got my quest set up and ready for action, I launched Bone Lab and got started. I ended up playing the game for about 4 hours in total, so let's do a quick recap. The game starts off with quite a scene, and you will have to put a rope around your neck in order to proceed. After having cut the rope around your neck, you'll fall down a dark hole and end up in a cave. And from here, you will have to make your way through the cave while figuring out how to move and use your controllers. Then you're introduced to the inventory system, that lets you take items and weapons that you find throughout the game with you, so that you can use them at a later occasion. Oh, inventory? Oh, cool. Oh, I can drop that? Wow. Making your way through the cave, you are given simple tasks, like opening a door with a key, and at this point you will start seeing enemies, and the first one that you're introduced to is handcuffed to a wall, making it pretty easy to take him down. <sighs> nice. The next one on the other hand is not, and will start attacking you as soon as you get too close, and this was my first real encounter with an enemy. <gasps> nice. Oh, yo, me. <laughs> Shit, man. And you can without a doubt say that I was not prepared for it. I proceeded following the cave and stumbled upon another enemy, and it went a little better than the first time around. Uh, I mean, come, come. Ah, oh, shit, shit, shit. Oh, shit. The next task was to open a gate with a lever. And this is when I realized how little space I actually had to work with. I guess I'm just going to follow this path and see where it ends. Oh, yo. Slowly but surely, I seem to be making my way out of the cave and into a new facility, having to take the route down the garbage chamber to proceed, which is where I was introduced to a new type of enemy, a pretty aggressive one. Come on. Come on, come on, oh, oh shit, oh man, come on. Oh. Now was the time to start using a gun, which meant that I could take out enemies from a distance. And that was perfect, since they could not get close to me. That's at least what I thought. Oh, thank you. That's a lot better. Come on. Nice, nice. Come on. I continued fighting my way through and stumbled upon multiple enemies, but unfortunately for them, they were no match for my gun. Oh no 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 no! Hello. Oh no 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 no! Oh, hello. Oh, my aim is amazing. Oh, 
Okay. Oh shit. Oh no. Oh no. Suddenly, I came to an elevator, and after having made my way out, I discovered that there were a lot of different game modes that you could try, and this is when the fun began. There were all sorts of different things that you could do, like for example bowling, shooting range, parkour, etc. I explored an open map with a ton of different rooms and buildings, and I'm not completely sure, but I think it's meant for multiplayer. I also tried a parkour game mode where I had to escape enemies that were following after me on rooftops. There were also enemies on the roof, trying to stop me from escaping, and it was a lot of fun, but it was very difficult. Ah, uh, okay, over here. Come on. No, 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 not my friend. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Where am I? Where? <laughs> Where am I? Going? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No, this is, uh, this is... Oh, this is lost. Oh, okay, I'm dead. I'm dead. <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to actually like have my guns with me, but we're just doing this. We're just running. Ah. Come on, come on, go, 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 go. Oh no, no. Oh. 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 Oh no. Okay, I was just stuck. <laughs> come, on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, nice, nice. Come on, you can do this. There you go. Nice. I spent the most time in creative and ended up spawning a bunch of enemies and going crazy with a baseball bat. <laughs> this is so chaotic. <laughs> so, this is so amazing. <laughs> it was a little too much for my headset to handle since the frame rate started dropping immediately. What an experience! I've never gotten this feeling from any game that I've played ever before. You get really immersed in the game since you have no signs of the outside world. You only hear the in-game audio and see what's displayed on a screen right in front of you. And this gives an insane sense of immersion. When you take off your VR headset, you're suddenly back in the real world. And in reality, you never left your bedroom. That's the type of experience you're left with after playing virtual reality. It's pretty weird to think about that a headset with a screen and speakers can give you such an experience. Where this game in VR shines the most is definitely when it comes to physics. And this is probably one of the biggest factors as to why this game is so immersive. On top of that, in similarity with the real world, you can literally interact with anything. Every furniture, item or thing that you see in the game is most likely interactable. And you can destroy it, take it with you, or move it, or even throw it. Like you could in the real world. There's so much that you can interact with in this game, and since the physics are so good and realistic, like when you hit a wooden crate with a baseball bat, it actually gets destroyed. And even though I have never fired any of the guns that I did in this game, it just felt like if I would have done it in real life, it would have felt something similar to what I did in the game. This applies to when you're fighting enemies as well. The way they react when they get punched in the face really makes it feel like you're actually interacting with that enemy. And not just through the game, but that they're actually standing right in front of you and you literally hitting them. Since the game has such realistic fundamental physics, the things that you never could do in real life, like for example punching a ball and making it fly 100 meters, this also feels very realistic. And even though you've never done it in real life, you can imagine that it would be something like that. It basically gives us the opportunity to experience things that we never could do in real life, in VR, without it actually feeling unrealistic. For me personally, this game was pretty scary. And I know that it isn't meant to be a horror game, but because I'm completely new to how VR feels and works, it made it feel like it was actually a horror game. When playing a traditional game on your computer, things never really get close to your face since you're usually always 60 centimeters from the monitor. But in VR, this is completely different, and things can get really close to your face. 
This alone was enough to creep me out, because I went into it thinking that things would never really come close to my face, and it feeling like it. But boy, was I wrong. Now let's talk about one of the downsides of VR that a lot of people experience, and that is disorientation. This applies to VR in general, and not only this game, but before buying it, there were a lot of people that warned about getting nauseous while or after playing the game, especially during some of the more intense parts of the game. And after having played this game a little, I can definitely understand why people want to warn others. I experienced this same type of disorientation after playing the game for the first time, and it's probably the closest thing that I have ever come to a out-of-body experience. It was extremely uncomfortable and it still felt like I had the headset on and was still playing the game. It felt weird to just look around, use my hands and walk the first minutes after taking off the headset. When I played the game the second time around, I did not experience this same type of disorientation. And it's probably something that my body is going to get used to the more I play VR, since I'm not the type of person that gets easily nauseous. But this is completely different from person to person, so this is probably one of the biggest downsides of VR. The most surprising thing for my part is how affordable this type of VR headset is, comparing it to what experience you actually get. I bought my MetaQuest 2 secondhand for $235. Yes, there are downsides, like for example the one we mentioned about getting disorientated and nauseous. But the experience that you get from virtual reality is unlike anything else or any game that I've ever played before. And lastly, I just wanted to thank you for watching this video and I hope it was educational in some way or another and that you did enjoy watching it. And I'll see you in the next one.